And if we get the sale price right, we'd make a fortune. But the odds against getting it right are a thousand to one. Not if we do our homework. But we've no precedent to guide us, Toby. The city's never handled a flotation as big as this before. All the more reason for us to be part of it. Big is not synonymous with profitable. Neither is small synonymous with modern. It's about time we moved into the 20th century. And what is that supposed to mean? It means we've become so bloody conservative, we're covered with cobwebs. For the last five years, we've done nothing but sit on our assets and watch them being eroded by inflation. If we'd invested in some of the harebrained schemes you recommended, we wouldn't have any assets. On the contrary, instead of just treading water, we'd have a stake in tomorrow. Well, as a matter of interest, let's just see where we'd be if we'd followed your advice. Arnold. Sir Wilfred asked me to prepare a hypothetical statement based on the assumption that we had invested in all these speculative projects suggested by Toby since he joined the board. As you will see, it shows a loss of 46%. Well, of course it shows a loss. You can't expect new companies like these to make a profit after only three years. They're long-term investments. From which we'd have been lucky to get our stake back. May I remind the chairman that this is a merchant bank? It's our business to invest in risk companies. Your great-grandfather didn't make Grafton's one of the most respected names in the city by taking unnecessary risks. What about Empire Chemicals? If the American bid had failed, Grafton's would have been finished. He was lucky! And he had far less to lose. We have an established reputation. There's no need to stick our necks out. There's no need for us to do anything. We can just sit here and twiddle our thumbs for the rest of our lives. But we wouldn't be fulfilling our function. And I am sure we are all very grateful to you, Toby, for the benefit of your vast experience. But so long as I am occupying this chair, I shall be the judge of whether we're fulfilling our function or not. And in my opinion, we should have nothing to do with this new flotation. Then you're prepared to leave the field free for our competitors? <laughs> I am. Well, I'm not. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. I could propose a vote of no confidence in the chairman. Oh, Toby, that would be very foolish. Since all the members of this board are my appointees. I'm well aware of that. But I already have six votes pledged to me. And it's no good trying to find out which they are, because they're also pledged to secrecy. You're in for an uncomfortable week. You'll never make a poker player, Toby. You haven't got the nerve. It's no good, Father. You're out of date. A dodo in an ivory tower. It's time you were put out to grass. The meeting is closed, gentlemen. Sir Wilfred? Yeah? I'm Karen, Toby's fiancée. I had no idea. What? How much he hated me. May I talk to you in private? Well? You and Toby. I was wondering if I could help with a Reconciliation. Has Toby put you up to this? No. As a matter of fact, he told me not to come here. Uh -huh. I take it you don't intend to love, honour and obey. Women do occasionally have minds of their own, Sir Wilfred. I wouldn't know. I've been without one for so long. Well, I just think this quarrel of yours is stupid. Oh, Toby refuses to talk about it. But he broods so much, it frightens me. I don't understand hatred. Oh, there are a lot of things you don't understand. How long have you known him? Three months. How did you meet? In a cafe. Do you love him? Very much. Then you have my sympathy. Is that all you have to say? 
Do you know what he called me just now? A dodo in an ivory tower. Yes, sir. Couldn't help overhearing. Well, this dodo isn't quite extinct yet. And it's liable to seek revenge. There's nothing I can do, then. There's no reason why we should hate each other, is there? None whatever. Karen. I'm, I'm giving a dinner party tomorrow night. If you can persuade him to come, he'll be welcome to join us. Thank you. Evening dress, which in your case means pale blue. Why? Because I think it would suit you. No. What do you mean, no? You're not wearing that dress. You can't. Don't be silly, darling. It cost a fortune. You went out and bought it. Well, just to please Father. It happens to be my favourite colour, too, and I needed a new dress. You wear it for me, then, on our honeymoon. Why not for him? Because... He's a dangerous man. <laughs> Sounds deliciously mysterious. All you've done is intrigue me. You refuse to change? If you refuse to elaborate. Please yourself. Where are you going? To dinner. On your own? I think you're being childish, Toby. You've let this ridiculous feud go much too far. All I'm trying to do is end it. Don't meddle. There are things you don't understand. What things? I can't tell you. Not yet. I'll ask your father then. No. If this is a preview of coming attractions, I can't say I'm very impressed. And I can't say I'm impressed by your lack of trust. I told you not to come to the bank, to stay away from Father. Yet not only did you go to see him, but you accepted his invitation without consulting me. Well, I think it's petty, just because your father's turned on by girls in blue dress. Not every girl. You mean I'm special? Very special. As I'm afraid you're about to find out. Thank you so much. Why is everyone staring at me? You're a very beautiful girl, Karen. All the women are jealous of you. Um, sorry. All the men are jealous of me. You mean of Toby? No, I don't mean of Toby. Come with me. Somebody I want you to meet. She's a knockout, Toby. I don't know why you kept her under wraps for so long. Long? I've only known her three months. Tim, I've got a little surprise for you. Tim Laidlaw, Karen Oldfield. Was well, this some sort of joke? Karen is Toby's fiancée. Well, he seems to have gone to a lot of trouble. Trouble? What trouble? You mean you don't know? May I ask how old you are? Twenty-six. <laughs> Why? Isn't it about time you told her, Wilfred? Yes. Come with me, Karen. Congratulations, Toby. I shouldn't leave her alone in there with your father for too long. You think she's his type? <laughs> I'd take a bet. He can be very persuasive, as I know to my cost. What is it you haven't told me? Why, Toby has no intention of marrying you. <laughs> Does he usually buy diamonds like this for girls he has no intention of marrying? Why did you tell me you met in a cafe? Because we did. You met through Mateline, a computer dating service. I have a very efficient intelligence network, Karen, so please don't lie to me again. Oh, it wasn't a lie. It just wasn't the whole truth. What was there to be ashamed of? I don't know. It's a confession of failure, isn't it? Toby didn't seem to think so. No. Didn't you ask yourself why an attractive, successful, young man should need the services of Mateline? 
I not only asked myself, I asked him. And what did he say? He said he'd joined the bank straight from Eton, out of one all-male preserve and into another, so mm. his choice was somewhat limited. <laughs> and you believed him? Well, why shouldn't I? I went to Maitline for the same reasons. I find it hard to believe that your choice was limited. Oh, it wasn't when I first came to London. But I'd come straight from a convent, an all-female preserve. I was terribly shy and virginal. Men soon lost interest. So when you stopped being terribly shy and virginal, what made you turn to a computer? I didn't seem to meet eligible bachelors anymore. The only men I knew were the ones who worked with me at the art gallery. They were all married. No social life? I'd cried wolf too often, literally. So I thought if I was seriously looking for a mate, I might as well do it scientifically. Did you think that that was what Toby was doing, seriously looking for a mate? What else should he be looking for? He asked you to marry him for one reason only. To destroy me. Destroy you? Mm. But don't worry, Karen. When he discards you, as he inevitably will, I'll be there. He's right. You are a dangerous man. Dangerous? No, my dear. Believe me, I have your welfare very much at heart. I think I'd better go. Do you want proof, Karen? My wife, Gwen. Toby's mother. She died 21 years ago, at the age of 26. Extraordinary. The resemblance? Yes. Now, why do you think Toby fed his mother's physical characteristics into a computer? An Oedipus complex? Mm -hmm. But Oedipus didn't only marry his mother. He killed his father. You mean... You think Toby's trying to kill you? In his own way, yes. No! I meant what I said, Karen. When Toby breaks off this engagement, come to me. No! He's been in there long enough. No, Toby. Toby! You're making an exhibition of yourself, Father. I suggest you take a cold shower. I hope you'll make allowances, Miss Oldfield. When Gwen died, Wilfred thought his life was over. Now, all these years later, you turn up. Yes. And you must admit the resemblance is uncanny. How long were they married? Five years. He must have loved her very much. He did. Ask Clem Laidlaw. Why? He was in love with the two. Wilfred took her away from him. Pistols at dawn, was it? Hardly. Clem's the family solicitor. Solicitors have to take their defeats philosophically. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's about time I introduced you to the beautiful apparition sitting at the other end of the table. <laughs> some of you may probably be wondering whether, like Frankenstein, I manufactured her in some secret laboratory upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> but I can assure you that if she had been my creation, I would never have allowed Toby to get his hands on her. <laughs> no, she's a real woman. Unfortunately, real women don't always know where their best interests lie. For example, just before dinner, I was trying to explain to Karen that her extraordinary resemblance to my late wife was not a coincidence. And she wouldn't believe me. She persists in believing that Toby loves her. Careful, Father. So I must make my warning more explicit. This engagement is a callous and vindictive exploitation of an innocent girl. Father, that's enough! You see, my dear son, Toby, doesn't like girls very much. His tastes lie 
How shall I put it? Closer to home. Of course, in the old days, one didn't talk about this kind of thing. <laughs> but now, consenting adults have much more freedom. But when adults do consent, I think that they should know what they're consenting to, don't you? It's not fair for one party to keep the other in the dark. So I must warn you again, Karen. Toby has no intention of fulfilling his conjugal obligations. You may think that there is no longer any such thing as a fate worse than death, but there is. Marriage to a homosexual. Come on, Karen. You're pathetic, Father. Pathetic and contemptible. Karen. Isn't it about time you looked at me? Why didn't you tell me I was an exact replica of your mother? Ah. Well? It doesn't matter now. What do you mean it doesn't matter? How do you think I feel suddenly discovering you'd pick me out just to spite your father? Do you think I go to all that trouble just to spite him? I don't know, Toby. I'm not sure of anything anymore. The three months we've known each other, we've done so much together. I thought I knew all about you. Now, suddenly, you're a stranger. Now, sit down, darling. Now, listen to me. It's true. I was searching for a girl who looked like Mother. I was going to use her, cynically and ruthlessly, for an idea I had. But I decided not to go through with it. When? When I fell in love with you. Your father said you had no intention of marrying me. You believe him? I don't know what to believe. So you, you don't know whether to believe his accusation or not? Oh, I couldn't care less about that. You were right. It was contemptible. Oh, come on, Karen. Be honest with me. Did it cross your mind that it might be true? Cross my mind? Ah, I yes. see. Well, part of it was true. Which part? The bit about not sleeping together. I told you. I'm old-fashioned about that sort of thing. <laughs> Dodo. Just like your father. Thanks a lot. Oh, darling, let's think of the future. I am thinking of the future. You can't spend the rest of your life with father's charming little speech ringing in your ears. Every time I brought a colleague back to dinner, you'd think he was a rival. Oh, nonsense. You wait. Father's a cunning bastard. He knew the poison would spread. You can always prove him wrong. How? By letting me spend the night. So you want proof, do you? Well, I'm bloody well not going to give it to you. When we sleep together, it'll be a consummation of our love, not because you want me to prove father wrong. All my life, he's dictated every move I've made. Well, this is one move I'm going to make in my own time. I'm sorry, darling. I didn't mean it, yes. really. Yes, yes, you did. You wanted to be sure before committing yourself. Why, it's, it's only natural. I've already committed myself. I didn't say that. Don't put words into my mouth. It won't work, Karen. What won't work? You and me. Don't you see? He's one. Nonsense. There's only one thing you can do. Break off the engagement. What? Well, you'll never be sure now. Whatever happens in bed, you'll always have doubts. I won't. Oh, Toby, please give me a chance no. to... It's hopeless. But why? I know you love me. And I love you. Oh, God, how I love you. Prove it. Oh. By giving me back the ring. But that would prove I didn't love no. you. No. It's the only way our love can survive. I don't understand. You don't have to. Either you trust me or you don't. something else I want you to do. So you believed Sir Wilfrid's accusation? Yes. Why? The father knows his own son. And that was the only reason you broke off your engagement? There was nothing else that could have caused you to take such a drastic step? No. We were very happy. 
Till last night. If I were a judge, Miss Oldfield, I'd be inclined to say that your love must have been of a rather superficial nature. If a few malicious words were capable of destroying it overnight. There were so many witnesses. The story will be all around London by now. I just don't think I'd be able to bear the scandal. I see. There's one thing I have to be sure about, Toby. If your father's defence is that his accusation is true, could he produce any evidence to support it? Of course not. You're sure? Quite sure. You deny the allegation? Categorically. But you will not accept his denial, Miss Oldfield. I'm sorry. Very well. You'll have to swear your affidavit before a commissioner of oaths. I'll let you know when I've made an appointment. I hope you're satisfied, Toby. I hope you realise I'm only doing this because I love you. But your father was right, wasn't he? You never had any intention of marrying me. We've got to get rid of him. Won't be easy. Toby may be a nuisance, but he's provided a much needed dynamic on the board. I doubt if we'd have been asked to float this new issue if it hadn't been for Toby. You're not one of his supporters, are you, by any chance? No, of course not. But I wish you'd patch up your differences. If not for your sake, then for the sake of the bank. Go in. Morning, Wilfred. Good morning, oh, Clem. Sorry, uh, it's all right. Come in, Clem. Sit down. You can wash the dirty linen in front of Arnold. Oh, very well. This is a difficult situation for me. I can't act for both of you. So if there is to be litigation, one of you will have to find another solicitor. Well, I will, if necessary. I was hoping it wouldn't be that we could keep it in the family, as it were. Keep what in the family? Tell him. As a result of Wilfred's unfortunate allegation last night, Toby's taking out a writ for slander. He's claiming substantial damages. How much? A hundred thousand pounds. A hundred thousand? Well, that's absurd. It's not as if he suffered any material loss. I'm afraid he has. Miss Oldfield has broken off her engagement. Oh, dear. If I let it go to court, what are my chances? Nil. You can take counsel's opinion if you wish. But there are too many witnesses. My advice is to settle. How much can I get away with? Well, I believe Toby would be satisfied with a sum in the region of 30,000. 30,000? I should think he bloody well would be satisfied. Well, let him take me to court, then. I'm damned if I get a hand over 30,000 without a fight. But, Wilfred, think of the bank, the unfavourable publicity. 30,000 pounds! It's out of all proportion. Well, who's to say what's in proportion, Wilfred? Some women, as I'm sure you will agree, are beyond price. Pair of eights to bed. Two quid. I see your two quid. Your two and five. Bold. Your five and 30,000. <laughs> so be. <laughs> and so the old man paid up. Without a murmur. He knew I got him by the short and curlies. <laughs> if you put John back at the bank, he's probably planning the night of the long night. He can <laughs> plan <laughs> all he likes. We'll fix him at the next board meeting. And Karen? What about her? Well, could she be tempted back by your change of circumstances? Who says I want her back? Oh, oh aren't you being a little hard, Toby? After all, it must come as a bit of a shock to hear your prospective father-in-law announce in public that your fiance is gay. If she really loved me, she wouldn't have believed it. Uh, oh. Yeah. oh, did you invite anyone else? No. There's somebody else. Hello, Father. Hello, Toby. We heard you were playing poker. You got a spare seat? Oh, Wilfred, please, you're making a fool of yourself. Wouldn't be the first time. Well, Toby. Why? I want to play cards. Our stakes are much too small for you. Ah, uh, well, stakes can always be raised. It wouldn't be fair on the others. Well, let's ask them, shall we? Oh, Wilfred, come on. Can't you see we're not welcome? Good evening, gentlemen. Ah, Phil. 
Have you got room for one more? Oh, of course, Sir Wilfred. Well, that is if for Toby. Good. How very kind of you. Thank you. Well, Toby, your friends don't seem to object. How about you? Are you prepared to let me have a go at winning some of my money back? So that's it. The 30,000. It really hurts, doesn't it? Well, of course it hurts. But I haven't come here to cry. I've accepted my defeat like a sportsman. Question is, how much of a sportsman... Are you? Three. Dealer takes two. An honest two? You'll have to pay to find out. Hundred. Your hundred and up. Two. Thousand. Your thousand and another two. Make it five. See you. Three seven. Three jacks. Your deal, father. Please do this, sir. Naturally. I like winning. How much am I done? Ten thousand? Oh, that's enough, Wilfred. It's obviously not your lucky night. Lucky? A good poker player depends on skill, not luck. Isn't that so, Tabby? Quite. One more hand, then. <sighs> With table limits. What's that mean? It means that either player can bet up to as much as the other player has left in front of him. Sure. How much do you suggest? Well, 10,000. You've got 40,000 of my money. Supposing I put up another 40,000. Double or quits. Oh. All right. Cut. Kibitzes should be seen but not heard, Phil. Dealer takes one. You to bed. Five thousand. Your 
5,000. And... 10. That's 20,000, Wilfred, you're mad. My son will tell you that I never invest in speculative ventures. There's no such thing as a safe investment anymore. See you. Flush. King High. Full house. That's another 30,000, you owe me, Father. I hope you brought your checkbook. Ah, Toby. Karen's here. Where? She said she wanted to see you alone. I put her in the boardroom. doing here? You never answer your phone. I had to talk to you. Why? I've been working things out. Oh? I couldn't understand it. I knew you loved me, yet you made me break off the engagement. There had to be a reason. True. I just think you might have let me in on it. I wasn't sure you cooperate. Oh, thou of little faith. I perjured myself for you, remember? And that was before I realized what you were up to. Can you ever forgive me? For 30,000 pounds, darling, I can forgive almost anything. That is, if you intend to share it with me. Do you? Of course. I love you, darling. That's something I've never deceived you about. When were you going to call me? In a few months. After the dust had settled, the break had to seem as genuine as possible. Have I spoiled it by coming here? The father didn't see you. No. Good. But you better get out of here. We'll continue this conversation tonight. At the flat? All right. Recommendation? It's a sound investment. We have to help protect our original stake in the company. All right. Anything else? Yes. There's a rumor that you lost 30,000 pounds at Perker last night. Well? What you do with your money is, of course, your own affair. But coming on top of the slander suit, it's bound to call your judgment into question. And if there's no confidence in you, there'll be no confidence in the bank. Don't worry, Arnold. It won't happen again. I'm afraid the damage has been done, Wilfred. will probably have persuaded a few more members of the board to vote with Toby. How long do we have to wait? A year, perhaps. I'll have to ask Clem Laidlaw when we're free from any legal comeback. But won't he guess that the break was a put-up job? Probably. Well, can you trust him to keep his mouth shut? Yes. You see, he doesn't really like Father. In fact... Go on. Oh, that idea I told you about. The one I needed someone like you for. He was in on it. Can you tell me about it now? <laughs> it was crazy. But uh, it might have worked. I was trying to find a girl I thought father might fall for. You see, he has six months to live. A year at the most. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the only thing I'm sorry about is that I'm not included in the will. He's leaving you nothing? Not a penny. Even this flat's in his name. When he dies, it'll have to be sold. So where would I have come in? Suppose he left a widow. A girl who was really in love with me. After his death, we'd be able to enjoy the whole of his estate and live happily ever after. I see. Yes, I like it. So did I. The trouble is, I uh, fell into my own trap. Discovered there were more important things than money. Little old me. Little old you. Still, 
I did bring you 30,000. 60,000. I won another 30,000 from him at poker. Can he afford it? Afford it? Darling, he's a sterling millionaire. 60,000 is chicken feed to him. How much is he worth? Two million. Three. I'm not sure exactly. Wow. And the plan was for me to marry him, inherit the money, and then marry you. That's right. Are you sure he only has a short time to live? He has terminal cancer. Ask Clem. He's the only person father confides in. Even I'm not supposed to know. You say Clem was in on it? We had to be. I needed someone who knew Mother well. Someone who could provide all the little personal details for the computer to copy. I promised him a small percentage if I was successful. <laughs> <laughs> He's really rather dishy, you know, your father. Well, you're not by any chance thinking of going through with it. What's the matter, jealous? Of course I'm jealous. I didn't realise he was that rich. Perhaps I shouldn't have given him the brush off. Oh, Karen. Listen, darling, if we've got to wait a year anyway, why don't we use the time to feather our nest? We've got 60,000. You don't think it's feathered enough? After the way he treated you, I think it is chicken feed. <laughs> darling, I love you. I, I couldn't possibly let you do it. You asked me to break off the engagement. Well, that was different. Why? Well, you didn't have to behave like a prostitute. We all behave like prostitutes when the price is high enough. I might lose you. How do I know you wouldn't run off with someone else after father's death? You asked me to prove my love by returning your ring. I didn't hesitate, did I? True. That's what Gwen used to do. What? Put the cream in first. I've always done that. I don't know why. Thank you. Karen, I want to ask you something. If you choose not to answer, I shall understand. But if you do answer, I would appreciate complete frankness. What is it? When I made that clumsy approach to you in the study, and you quite correctly put me in my place, did you do that because of Toby? Of course. And not because you found me unattractive. Oh, no. In other circumstances, perhaps... Yes? Perhaps I wouldn't have reacted so violently. And now that there are other circumstances... I think I've said enough. Karen, I haven't got very much longer to live. Now, please don't say anything. This is a prepared speech. When the doctor told me the news, I accepted it philosophically because, well, my wife was dead, my son estranged, I had nothing to live for. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Ah. Yes, well, uh, unlike Dylan Thomas, I had no resources to fall back on. So I resigned myself to my fate. And then, you appeared. May I continue? Of course. I know next to nothing about you. But you looked so like Gwen that when you came into the boardroom that day, I said to myself, no, Toby is not going to have this girl, she's mine. The feminist wouldn't care for that, Wilfred. I have only ever loved one woman all my life. And she was taken away from me 21 years ago. And now, suddenly, here she was again, reincarnated. Can you imagine how I felt? Yes. So I made a fool of myself. I can't imagine what I hoped to achieve by it, but... Hoped I'd leave Toby, which I did. Yes, I... I also hoped that you would turn to me. But my behaviour was hardly calculated to make you do that. No. No. No doubt you told your parents you couldn't possibly marry into such an appalling family. I haven't any parents. They died when I was a baby. That's why I was sent to a convent. So... So you're all alone in the world, too? Yes. Quite alone. In the light of what I've just told you, 
Do you think you could bring yourself to marry me? Why? Because I remind you of Gwen? You remind me of a time when I was happy. When I die, when I die, you will still be young enough to find a husband of your own age and you will be a very rich woman. But you don't love me. Oh, does it matter? I'm lonely, you're hurt. Perhaps in the little time that I have left, we can... Perhaps you'd like some time to think about it. But please, don't take too long. I can give you my answer now, Wilfred. Congratulations, Toby. I never thought you'd pull it off. When are you going to draw up the new will? Oh, it's ready now. I'll get him to sign it as soon as he gets back from his honeymoon. You know, it's curious. I'm really rather jealous. Of Wilfred? Yes. <laughs> Karen's a very desirable young lady. I've uh, grown quite fond of her. Patience, Toby. By the end of the year, the princess will be yours with all her kingdom. Or my kingdom. <laughs> yes, of course. I take it you and Karen will continue to see each other. We mustn't let our love wither from neglect, must we? We shall meet as often as propriety will allow. And you have 60,000 to be going on with. A tidy sum even in these inflationary times. Yes, I uh, should be able to manage on that. I'm grateful, Clem. Very grateful. How nice. But I haven't been helping you for 5% of your gratitude. Now, supposing you go into the study, and I'll go and ask Masters to bring some champagne. Toby! Sorry I couldn't be there, darling. I'd love to have seen it all signed and sealed, but I had to be conspicuous by my absence. What are you doing here? You'll ruin everything. Father would expect his only begotten son to offer his congratulations. Oh, quick, before he comes back. Incidentally, it was a bit stupid telling him that we didn't see each other after you broke off the engagement. He must have known you were lying. He didn't. He's no idea we got together again. On the contrary, Karen. I know exactly what you and Toby are up to. You're after my money. But don't worry. You have my blessing. You mean you want me to marry Toby? If you don't, I shall come back and haunt you. Both of you. Champagne. What is all this? Thank you, Masters. I'll do it. What exactly are we celebrating? The marriage? Or something else? We are celebrating the successful completion of a little plan, Karen. A scheme devised by Toby, Clem Laidlaw, and myself. You and Toby? You've just been pretending to hate each other? It was a necessary part of the... Charade. But why have you both been lying to me all the time? Before we could tell you what it was about, we had to set you a little test. I had to prove I wasn't a gold digger. Exactly. <laughs> mm. Now then, tell me what you know about something called capital transfer tax. I know it's very high. It is iniquitously high. For someone of my means, about 65%. So that when I die, if I were to leave Toby a million pounds, the inland revenue would take at least 600,000 of it. But if I were to leave it to my wife and my widow were then to marry my son... There'd be no tax at all? I see. 
And so I wonder if you do see, Karen. I wonder if you realize how quickly our present tax system is killing the goose that lays the golden egg. That sounds like a party political broadcast. <laughs> yes. I believe in private enterprise. I believe in a man's right to provide security for his children. I also believe that Toby will use my money far more wisely than any government. But if nobody paid any taxes, the country would grind to a halt. I have paid taxes all my life. I've been assessed for income tax and surtax on every penny I've ever earned. I've helped to build schools for other people's children, motorways for other people's motor cars, leisure centres for other people to play in. I have watched my money being used to subsidise laziness, perpetuate inefficiency, and finance Marxist students so that they may plot the downfall of capitalism. So I reckon I've paid my debt to society. And I'm damned if I'm going to pay it again after I'm dead. It's true, then. You are going to... To die? Oh, yes. Mm. That's why there was no time to lose. But the poker game, the, the slander suit... Both tax avoidance schemes devised by Clem to give Toby a little more pocket money. If the system penalises those who save and encourage those who gamble, then so be it. But we had to convince the rest of the world, so we built up this public feud. There's just one thing, Toby. How do I know you're not a gold digger? I didn't want to go through with it, darling. It was your idea, remember? Yes. So, what shall we drink to? Salud, amor, y pesetas. Health, love, and money? Yes. After all, what else is there? Good morning, Mr. Laidlaw. Lady Grafton, this is an unexpected honour. I came for two reasons. One, to tell you that my husband and stepson are well satisfied with the way you have conducted their affairs. How gratifying. May I also hope to have the honour of serving you in the future? Tell me first, what do you think of my outfit? Extremely fetching. Also extremely expensive. Ah. Do you want to know how much it cost? If you wish to tell me. Five thousand pounds. Ooh. And this bracelet? Diamonds and sapphires. Ooh, Three thousand, perhaps? Another five. Indeed. Sir Wilfrid must value you very highly, Lady Grafton. Oh, he does, Mr. Laidlaw, he does. <laughs> and the second reason for your visit? To bring you this. I thought you might like it for your album. Ah! The same register office where he married the first Lady Grafton. I still have the photograph. Well... Hasn't changed much, has he? Neither has his wife. No. She's still as beautiful as ever. Thank you. Who would have thought that the wheel would come full circle? And that you would be able to step into your mother's shoes? Thanks to you and the great god, Computer. Oh! Computer's like a woman. Feed her with the right propaganda and he'll come up with the right answers. <laughs> Clever old thing. You, but you had to wait a long time for your revenge, didn't you? Better late than never. I still find it incredible that Mother never told Wilfred about me. Well, she didn't want to spoil her chances. She'd always had her eye on him. That's why she refused to marry me. Though I didn't realise it at the time. Yet she was prepared to have your baby. Oh, <laughs> she was quite unprepared, as a matter of fact. I'm afraid you were an accident. How embarrassing. It wasn't that she didn't love you. It was simply that she loved Wilfred more. And how did you feel about giving me away to protect your family solicitor image? Well, I used to lie awake at night wondering how I could make it up to you. And now you have. I hereby absolve you of your guilt. Karen, are you sure you can cope with all this? Quite sure I've done all right so far, haven't I? You've done splendidly, but wouldn't you rather I handle Toby after Wilfred's death? No, thanks, Daddy. I want to see the look on his face when I remind him it's illegal to marry your half-sister. 